Kavan Allen. Kavan Allen is a dynamic leader, philanthropist, author, youth pastor, transformational speaker, and the friendliest guy you'll ever meet. With an impressive 30-year journey in ministry, he began preaching at the tender age of six and has since shared his message across Jamaica, the Caribbean, and South America. Currently, he serves as the youth pastor at Fellowship Tabernacle in Kingston, Jamaica, a position he has held for over eight years. Kavan's professional journey commenced in banking with a notable five-year tenure at the Bank of Nova Scotia. However, his passion for ministry led him to pursue it full-time in 2013. Rooted deeply in his identity in Christ, Kavan lives by the scripture from 1 John 3, verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. He authored The Father Wants Sons, Not Servants, and founded Revolution Ministries, an organization committed to empowering youth through one ethos, love. Together with his wife of over a decade, Kavan co-founded the Jamaican luxury fashion brand, House of Clay. Additionally, Kavan, along with Keisha, is a certified counselor and marriage coach, guiding couples through their unique program, Two Become One Marriage. All this while being a proud parent of four remarkable children. Please welcome Kavan Allen. I know it's almost lunchtime, so I have the job to give you a word for your spirit right before you get something for your flesh. Well, the stomach part of the flesh, because you know. <laughs> but it's so good to be here. Come on, clap yourselves for being here. I want us to be, if we can stand again and be, give a big round of applause to Auntie and Uncle Norman, who are the ones who put passion and purity together. They carry this vision. Come on, clap them, man. They have blessed so many of us, and we honor God for them. So listen, I want to... I, when I had the opportunity to come here and I hear the theme about running for life, the Lord began to speak to me and I want to talk to you a little bit because I remember immediately, immediately, you Usain Bolt. Do you know once in Jamaica you talk about running, Usain comes to mind, right? And as I remembered Usain, I remembered, most people don't remember, but do you remember his first Olympics? He did not run the 100. Anybody remember? Anybody remember what he ran in his first Olympics? The 400. And he didn't come first, second, not third. I don't even sure him come fifth. And he was running a race. Hear me. That was not suited or the best race for him. And immediately the Lord began to talk to me and he says, Come on, many of us, young people, all the old ones, them too, we love going like all the young people alone. But many of us are running a race, but we will never get the desired outcome because it's not the race God has set for us to run. And so, you see, when, when you see him run, and, you know, they had a lot of expectation. Everybody thought that he's going to be the next big thing. And he didn't even medal. Jamaica was disappointed. He was disappointed. And there was just this big thing, you know, I'm not working hard enough. He's not this enough. He's not that enough. But what the real issue was, he was not put in the position to run what he should run. And many of you are disappointed with the outcomes. Uh, and, and, uh, is, is that so? You look at your own life and you're disappointed with uh, what you're producing. You look at your own life and you're disappointed with what is happening. You're disappointed maybe with grades, with parents. Okay, all of you are not disappointed with your parents. Everybody here have great, wonderful parents, wonderful homes. Parents don't stress them out any at all, especially that one in the third row. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> That's my daughter, right? 
But we are so frustrated with what life has to give us. But God says, are you running and chasing after the right thing? Are you in the right race? What a thing when you run and give your best and give everything. And when you look back, you're saying, this was not what I should have pursued all along. The Bible tells such a powerful story of Jacob. And Jacob was running a race. <laughs> He wanted everything. He wanted the blessing. He wanted uh, wealth. He wanted a wife. Oh, praise the Lord. And so he pursued it. In fact, Joseph, Jacob says, I won't let anything stop me from getting what I want. So he says, not even my brother. My own brother should get the blessing from the father. I won't let my brother stop me. Him could have born before me, so tell him one born before me. The Bible said he deceived his father. He deceived everyone around him to get what he wanted because he thought that what would give him fulfillment. The Bible said he got the blessing and his life didn't get better. His life got worse. Now he has to leave his home, run away from him yard because his brother won't kill him. And his father is so disappointed that he would deceive his blind, dying father. I won't get into the story because time don't allow. But that's how some of us, we are running down things that seem good. That in and of itself, they aren't bad. But we must chase and run the race where we put the first things first. And we'll get there. And so here's Jacob trying to get this blessing that comes from his father. Forgetting that his heavenly father has already blessed him. And has already spoken a word over him. And has already declared that his purpose. That the older will serve the younger. So he took it up on himself. He gave everything to deceive his father. His father was blind. His brother was hairy. He wasn't as hairy. So he put on dead animal skin. And, and cooked nice food for him father and everything. And do all kind of things and got it. And when he got it, he thought his life would be better. Many of us out there, we've been chasing some things. And some of us even get it. And you're like, I eat that. Anybody ever had that situation? Anybody ever get the girlfriend you've been a try to get? For a long, long, long time. Don't raise your hand. Just... Anybody I shoot them shot at the boy, the girl I shoot her shot, and you shoot the shot and the shot catch and I be a stress. Don't raise your hand. This is fine. Right? And so many of us are pursuing so many things. But God says put the first things first. And so he got the blessing quickly. He went to his uncle's house and he said, you know what? All I want is this beautiful woman. I want Rachel. Rachel, right? Yes, Rachel. And he said he wanted Rachel, and he worked 14 years to get Rachel. It was to be seven, but the uncle tricked him. But again, long story short, he ended up with two wives in 14 years to get the person that he wanted. Bless you. And the Bible says, here it is that he had the blessing that wasn't enough. No, he has two wives that wasn't enough. He said, no, I need riches. And we are in this perpetual chase of the next thing, of the next thing. But it does not quench the real thirst of your soul. Some of us studied so hard for C-Sec, you get all of your subjects. And you're like, oh, no keep. Oh, no university. Some of you pray, beg God for every book for the C-Sec, every pay the school fee, Jesus come down. And you pass every subject, now you realize hey, the money for um, university could appear down upon a house. <laughs> so you're stressing all over again. I'm telling you, we are pursuing things that aren't bad, but you are running the wrong ways. In fact, the Bible says you should seek first the kingdom of God. I should give everything in the race to find God and then he had all other things if I run for the other things first it will lead to disappointment I hope I'm talking to somebody this morning and the truth is many of us want God to use us but God uses those who chase after him with everything first I won't get into it. I mean, I have so much scripture here that I was going to read from, but I, I may not be able to read it. But I tell you, in John 20, verses 1 to 10, it talks about a race that happened. That Mary went to the tomb of Jesus, found that it was empty. She ran back and she told two of the disciples, John and Peter. And the Bible said they raced. Guess who win? John wrote in his 
version of the gospel that he wants. <laughs> I don't know if we can trust it. I think we must fact check it. But that's what he said, right? And they raced to the tomb to find that Jesus has risen from the dead. And the Lord was saying to me, Come on, many of us are racing after other things, but who are those who will race to come and see that God is risen and He is real and He has power and that in Him you can have life? Who are those running after Him? And it is those who run after Him, all other things will be added, but then you will find peace and strength. And watch it, who are, some of, who are the two most popular? disciples when Jesus went up to heaven who are the most popular ones who we read about the most talk to me now man Peter and John those who run after him will be used by him I hope somebody can get it this morning but we have been so distracted running after other things like Jacob trying I just want the next listen great listen my love I went to the great Woolmers High school for boys. Oh, praise the Lord. Excellence is a must, but my excellence coming from my effort will never quench the thirst of my soul. My excellence coming from pursuit of Jesus Christ and him directing me and him leading me. Listen, my time almost done. Let me tell you how God directs. <laughs> Principal Pettycook not here today. He was a teacher, not my math teacher, but I was horrible in math. Um, and my teacher said to me right before the math exam, he says, come on, if you buckle down and practice math today until the day of the exam, I promise you, I believe in you. You can get a three. <laughs> it was that bad. Right? And so, let me show you. The truth is, some of it was idleness. I won't put all of it like, oh, I was just serving the Lord. I didn't have time to study. Some of it was idleness. But a lot of what I was doing though, I mean, youth services, ministry. I mean, we, when we were in high school, I was in high school, everything was about God. You know, most things. <laughs> Help me, Lord. You know, but we re I really gave myself to ministry as much as I could, right? And so here it is, that math exam coming, and I did not practice a thing. I focused on the other subjects. The night before math, two people that went to church with me, they were in... There was my youth leader at the time. Um, two of them spent whole night with me. We practiced some past papers. Most things I never know. And I want you to believe me, the very past papers that we practiced when I left and came to Woolmers uh, to do the math exam is the exact questions. I don't know if anybody understands. So anybody look and say, oh my God, you're so smart. I can't tell you. It is Jesus. Pursue him. Put you in the right places. Give you the right teachers. Give you the right friends. I'm trying to help somebody that, yes, excellence is a must. But you have to put Jesus and pursuing him as the first thing. And then he will add everything else. Am I making sense to somebody? And so we have a generation of people. We are run down everything. Oh, my God. We run down TikTok now. We run down Instagram. We run, oh, Jesus. We're running down everything. Fame, fortunes, likes. But nobody here don't do those things. We are too busy chasing the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. But we are missing out the most important thing. Today is the day where our focus is about to shift. I read one more scripture and I pray for you. Maybe two more. So let's see how time goes. Today is the day where our mindset is shifting. That like Peter and John, we are going to pursue Christ with everything. We are going to run after him. Even when I am disappointed, I wish I could preach. Listen, sorry, I, forgive me. Even when I am disappointed, Peter and John, they were so disappointed because Jesus was crucified. They felt like their whole life mission was now a waste. Many of you feel disappointed. God has prayed. God has asked. God has fast. What is happening? But even in my disappointment, I will pursue you. I don't know if anybody can grab it with me. Even in my failures, I will pursue you. I won't let my failures stop me from getting up and running after Christ. 
And it is those who pursue him with everything. I know I'm messing up the thing, forgive me. It is those who will pursue him with everything that will find him. One scripture says that you will find me when you seek me with your whole. <sighs> Anybody want to seek him with their whole heart this morning? Anybody making a shift? Jacob learned. I was going about it wrong. Jacob wanted the this, the blessing, the money, the woman, the everything. You know when his life shifted? When he pursued God. The Bible said one night wrestling with God and his life changed forever. One night. Suppose I did too. <laughs> if you will, get, I'm telling you, if you will say, God, I won't let my failure stop me. God, I won't let what people think stop me. I won't let any limitations stop me. As of today, even the things I don't understand. Guys, I got baptized at the age of five. I started preaching at the age of six. I, I never understand nothing, but my understanding nothing never stopped me from seeking God. Even when I don't understand what the scripture says, God, you are Lord, I want you. I wish somebody would, would understand here. Listen, I want to do two things. If you are here this morning and you are saying, God, I'm not a Christian, but I'm ready to pursue you with all my heart. I'm not yet a believer, but I have to make that decision. I've been chasing everything. I've been running Running, can I? I'm going to just put somebody on the, one of my guys on the keyboard for me. Yeah, yeah man. You come right in time. Just, just help him out. Him just go and play for me while I just do this part of ministry. I've been chasing and running and doing all kind of things, Lord. It has not brought life. I'm frustrated. I'm miserable. I am empty. I'm on my way to hell and I'm still not even getting what I'm trying to get. If you are saying this morning, I'm done with running down empty things. I want Jesus. If you're ready to give your heart to the Lord, this is my first altar call. I have one more after that. So I want you to be very decisive about it. Stop. Don't let the enemy trick you. Don't let the enemy deceive you. Don't let the enemy tell you you have tomorrow. Don't let the enemy tell you that. Wait till you fix this and you fix that. We are going to pursue God even in our weaknesses. Because when we are weak, then he is strong. So if you are like that, you're not a Christian, but you're saying, no, I'm ready to give my heart to the Lord. I know this is not the only word today that would have touched you. The skit, the songs, everything that has been happening. And you have heard it and you are saying, I'm ready to surrender my life to the Lord. I want you just to raise your hands and stand. Just, you are ready to give your heart to the Lord right here and now. Don't look at anybody else. Don't, I look, listen, this race is about you and you alone. I see one hand in the air. Can you just stand up? Person raising your hand. That person, don't be afraid. Just stand where you are. Let not stand up yet. You want them to clap you somewhere? <laughs> don't be afraid. I want to pray with you. And if you are ready to give your heart to the Lord, I want you just to come. I want you to come, sir. I guess the young man that was standing wasn't ready yet. But if there's anybody, you are ready to give your heart to the Lord. I want you to come. And that includes recommitment, which I'm getting to. But you want to recommit, you feel as if you were running that right race. And you want to recommit, I want you to come. We want to pray for you. Hallelujah. Let me do this, because I know there are some people that God is calling and he's speaking to your heart. I probably have... I probably have a little time. Oh, see, little time. Oh, so that time check was for the word. Oh, not for the other part. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I see what I go on. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's do it. Let's do it. I surrender. I surrender. to give your heart to the Lord. I want you to come. You're ready to surrender to Jesus and run this race for him and him alone.
this is that moment that Jacob was waiting for. He tried so many other things, but it did not produce life. Don't be afraid. This is your moment. Don't be afraid. There's still some more people that need to come to surrender. God is here and he's here for you. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Even if this is your second time, your third time, we're saying, God, I'm committed to finishing strong. I'm committed to finishing this race strong. I have about two more minutes for those who want to come. I surrender all. Somebody got a praise as they come. Just come a little closer. Still see some more people coming. Father, for some of them, this is their first time ever committing to you. 
For others, Lord, they have committed before, Lord, and it's, they felt like they made a mess of the whole journey. But I thank you, Lord, you're able to meet each and every one of them where they are. And that, Lord, this commitment, oh, Lord, you are with them. You are for them. You are saying, Lord, that this time they're understanding. I have to give it everything. I have to come after you with all of me. I can't withhold any part. I can't withhold any side. I declare, Lord, that you put around them the right people to strengthen them. Oh, God, even as you have created this conference as, a, as another opportunity for them to draw closer to you, Lord. We declare now in the name of Jesus that like this time is the time of true commitment and true stirring where inner healing, inner deliverance will come like never before. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are here and you are doing a shifting on the inside of them like never before, Lord. And that this is their time of complete surrender. If you are here to give your heart to the Lord, just lift your hand high. One hand high. Just one hand. And say this with me. Jesus. Come on, say it with your chest. Jesus. Jesus. I give you my life to this morning. I surrender completely to you, Lord. I receive the forgiveness of all my sins. And I claim you as my Lord and my Savior. I will never be the same again. Because as of today, I am a child of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That's it, El. Just lift your hands. Everybody stay prayerful. Everybody stay prayerful. I'm going to say some things to specific ones. But if it belongs to you too, if it's what, if it's touching you, wherever you are, whether you're at the altar or you're in your seat, I want you to begin to just receive it. Amen? So if, if it sounds like you and what you are going through, you get up, you lift your hands, you begin to thank and I receive it. We can't do that. We're going to do that for about five, seven minutes. All right? That's good. Because as you are here, the Lord is just speaking to me. There's so much happening. There's so much happening with even like your self-esteem and your self-worth. And the Lord says, even as you give of yourself, like almost every time you try it and you think like, I have done good. And you know, everybody going to be happy with me. Everybody going to, it's like, no, they, they, they don't see you. You don't feel seen. You don't feel understood. You feel as if everybody is abandoning me no matter how hard I try, no matter how much I give. I just want to let go right there and just lift both hands. Just let, lift both hands. Step forward. I don't know if that's with anybody else, but I want you to receive this because the Lord says right now, in the name of Jesus, he's setting you free from that feeling of rejection, from that feeling of loneliness, like nobody gets me and understands me, like everything I try doesn't amount to much so it don't make any sense I try anymore, like the enemy has even been attacking your education because you're a brilliant person, but you, you, the desire to try, and the desire to push, and the desire to just go for more, he's trying to wrap that from you but the Lord is replacing that now in Jesus name can I get one of the workers female workers quickly and so the Lord is saying I am father in the name of Jesus father in the name of Jesus Oh uh -huh. 
Jesus. We raise up men of God all over this room. Every attack against the men, Raisha, against their sexuality, the spirit of lack of self control has been ravaging our, ravaging our men. But in the name of Jesus, we declare the spirit of God. You will be in control of your thoughts, in control of your sexual organs, in control of your decisions, in control of your temper. There will be the fruit of the spirit, self-control and temperance come upon you now in Jesus' name. All the men struggling with anger, all the men struggling with rage, I speak to you now, the peace of God, the peace of God, the peace of God. and walking in holiness. I speak to you now by the power of the Holy Spirit. We cut off every demonic connection. We cut off every demonic influence and we declare you will walk in holiness now. You are up your head. Listen to me. We're going to take it back up in a second. Passion and purity. The enemy has been trying to kill the purity of this generation. We don't lack passion because once we get connected to anything, we'll give our passion. True? But our purity, he has been after it. It ends today. We are a generation that will walk in purity. I don't see what it's saying. I want to think it means done. That's what I think it All right, cool. We are a generation that will walk in purity. I prophesy over you. You're not doing it by your own strength. You're doing it by the strength of the Lord. Every sexual demonic spirit attached to those struggling and wanting to be free. Be free now in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. I've been preaching from the age of six and I struggled with pornography for many years. I learned my, I watched my first pornographic thing because of a friend right here in the school tell me to turn the channel. First form. And I had to fight it, but let me tell you, whom the sun sets free is free. Don't let the devil lie to you that you cannot be free. I'm a walking testimony, you can be free. So Father, in the name of Jesus, let the freedom of God fill this room. Every sexual oppression of every kind. Leave this room now in Jesus' name. Your time is up. Take your hands off the people of God. Let the power of the Holy Ghost strengthen them. In Jesus' name. I was going to two things quickly. My time done. So bear with me, all right? All right. I'm going to take it out here at lunchtime. Amen. Nobody not saying. <laughs> Just two things quickly. Where's the friend in the block? Come here. Just stretch your hands towards her. There's such a call of leadership on you. Spirit of the Lord has singled you out many times. It's not the first time. And he's saying, I'm calling you to come out to the fore and to lead. But it's like the enemy tries to dumb down in your mind who you are and what God can do through you and in you. But the Lord is saying, shake that off now in the name of Jesus. Not even David's father believed in him. Even after David was anointed, his brothers, when he came to give them food, said, what are you doing here? Even after being anointed. It's not about who believes in you. It's about that God calls you. Even if you don't believe in yourself, God calls you. And so God is calling you out now. That now is the time. A people needs you. A generation needs you. Stop shying away. I see you saying, but God, what am I even good at? What am I going to do? Most leaders are okay with doing different things, but not great at any one thing. Why? Because they are called to find those who are great at one thing and lead them into it. You are called to find the great people and lead them into it. Lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare the Spirit of God upon your daughter to lead. 
Rusha aseke eraba kuseke, ra aseku raba sotoko, rusheke kekese, ru asheke. Father, we declare now. We stir up the gifts. 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 The fire of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, rest upon your daughter now. We stir up the gifts from the inside. Ra asa tukuse, like you said to Timothy, that was in your mother and your grandmother. We stir up the gifts. Rusha takase, rusha eseke, ratukusutu. No more timidity, no more fear, no more worry, no more comparison. But right now, in the name of Jesus, let the fire on our altar never burn out. Let the fire on our altar never burn out. We arise, we say, arise for greatness. And be used by God in Jesus' name. Finally, everybody lift their hands. Father, set this generation ablaze. Set this generation ablaze. Set this generation on fire. This will be a generation that seeks your face, Lord. Make us hungry for you, Jesus. Fill us with your power and your strength. The Lord says, sir, you're not going home the same. You, great. Keep it right there, LJ. I love it. In the grave, you are not going home the same. There are many things that you're contemplating and that you're trying to get in order. The spirit of the Lord goes before you to get them in order now. You are not going home the same. In Jesus' name. Just right here, you right here. The breaker is breaking everything that is trying to hold you back. The enemy has tried so hard to hold you back. So hard. She's right. She's, she's seen me right here. Yeah, in the chain. In the, he's tried so hard, and you've been in a pull and thing with God. Sometimes you just back and forth, back and forth. like when you feel like you take a two step forward, something just. God is settling it right now. He's called you. He wants you. He wants all of you. And every assignment, as they never planted people in your life as assignment to distract you, we remove them now in Jesus' name. And we declare you'll stand upon the truth of the Lord. You'll stand and you will not be shaken. You will not be shaken. The enemy is trying to shake you. You will not be shaken. In Jesus' name. My last thing. If you are sick and have any sickness of any kind, lift your hands. Father, we thank you that you are here to heal. Every sickness of every kind be removed from this auditorium in Jesus' name. Father, fill this event with testimonies of healing. Let many people say, I came with back issues, neck issues, blood issues, uh, terminal illnesses. Father, all kind of sickness. I came, but I left without it. In Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for your power and for your, 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 your fire and for your presence. And we declare, Lord, we'll never be the same again. In Jesus' name. Somebody got a big praise. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. You know the Lord said that there'd be a shout of victory that comes from Hero Circle today. Somebody shout hallelujah. Come on, young people, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Shout Jesus. Call him by his name. Turn up the volume. Call him by his name. He breaks the chain. Call him by his name. Somebody got saved today. Call him by his name. Somebody was running towards the devil, but they're not running to Jesus. Somebody shout, Jesus. Come on, young people, make some noise for Jesus. Put your hands together and bless his name. Somebody shout, hallelujah. 